NASA's Mars Exploration Program is probably one of the most ambitious, expensive, and long drawn out space exploration projects in the world. From Mariner 4's first flyby of Mars in 1965 to the recent findings of the Curiosity rover, NASA spent over 40 years and billions of dollars on exploring Mars. Not only that, with the Orion spacecraft and space launch system almost ready, NASA aims to land astronauts on Mars by the year 2030. As we speak, NASA scientists and physicists are currently involved in an experiment that has scientists living in a simulated Martian atmosphere for an entire year. And by Martian atmosphere, we mean six people living in an enclosure 36 feet in diameter on one of the Mars-like slopes of Hawaii's many mountains, with no one else for company except each other and no communication with the outside world except their mission support. And NASA isn't the only one doing it. The ESA, too, together with the French and Italian space agencies, is running a similar experiment in the extreme environs of Antarctica. Plus, Elon Musk's company SpaceX is planning to colonize Mars alongside NASA. And of course, there's Mars One, a highly ambitious and also highly questionable program that aims to send people on a one-way trip to Mars. Basically, to cut a long story short, folks, buckle up. Looks like we are going to Mars. Mars has always been very inviting for a number of reasons. First, its red color thanks to the iron-rich regolith, which was thought to be similar to Earth's surface matter. Next, while Mars is much colder than Earth, it is still the most hospitable among other planets. Most importantly though, the photos from NASA's Viking program showed that Mars too was dotted with valleys, mountains, craters, gullies, and channels that suggest it may once have had flowing water, along with sand dunes, volcanoes, canyons, and polar ice caps. Mars even has seasons just like Earth. However, at the crux of our fascination or obsession with Mars lies the fundamental question, where did we come from? Many scientific theorists believe that life on Earth may have actually been seeded by Mars, a concept known as panspermia. The theory that life on Earth originated from microorganisms or chemical precursors of life present in outer space and able to initiate life on reaching a suitable environment. In fact, if credible evidence of life on Mars could be discovered, it could change what we know about evolution entirely. We could all be Martians! Then there's also the possibility of humanity on Earth getting wiped out altogether. As we speak, there's about 150 asteroids that NASA is carefully monitoring, each of which has a good chance of doing the Earth much damage. So if the human species is going to survive, is it only going to be on Earth? With this thought, NASA and many other agencies of the world are now strapping on spacesuits with the goal of making manned missions to Mars and eventually colonizing the Red Planet. So the question is, what are we waiting for? Plenty. The road to Mars is definitely long and full of hurdles. One of the biggest challenges to make a crewed Martian journey is simply the sheer power needed to blast off and speed a spacecraft large enough to carry the people, supplies, and fuel needed to make the journey. Then there's the small problem of actually landing on the planet. Curiosity weighs as much as a small car and needed a parachute to create the drag force of 29,300 kilos to land. Now imagine a two-story building hurtling its way through the Martian atmosphere at 24,000 kilometers per hour, which by the way is more than the speed of sound. A few parachutes or propulsion rockets won't be enough to make a safe landing. Yet, with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket making the very first unmanned and vertical landing in late December 2015, it looks like this problem may not be a problem for long. But what about the journey itself? Rovers and probes are practically immune to the dangers of space and solar radiation. But humans? Not so much. Moreover, robots don't get nostalgic. The effects of living in almost complete isolation with very little contact with Earth can't be entirely too pleasant. For almost all the participants in simulations, the psychological issues are the hardest part. Perhaps one of the most significant challenges, though, of a manned Mars mission is simply the cost and resources. The ISS, currently one of the most expensive space projects, needed the cooperation and resources of almost five different countries to come to life, a process that took about five years to draft. 
it's safe to say sending humans to Mars will hardly be a NASA alone project. How and when international space agencies come together for such an endeavor remains the biggest question of this journey. Given all the effort required, is visiting Mars really worth the trouble? Well, if we care about humankind and our existence, then the answer is a resounding yes. Space exploration is one of the soundest ways in which we discover our past and ascertain our future. It's one of the foremost causes of many groundbreaking scientific discoveries, in the absence of which we wouldn't understand what we now do. If we're really keen on saving our planet, knowing more about it is the first step. And sometimes, in order to know what's going on in here, you need to first know what's out there. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. A big thanks to Google's Making and Science team for making this video possible. If you like what we have made, please share it with your friends using the hashtag ScienceGoals. The next video which we are working on is going to be about Stranger Things. So hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss it. And one last thing, please support us on Patreon so we can keep doing what we love.